them start to play Dance with me, make me sway Like a lazy ocean hugs the shore Hold me close, sway me more Like a flower bending in a breeze Dance with me, oh, sway with me When we dance, you have a way with me Stay with me, oh, sway with me Other dancers may be on the floor Dear, but my eyes will see only you Only you have the magic technique When we sway, I go weak I can hear the sound of violins Long before it begins Make me thrill as only you Sway me smooth, oh, sway me now.
Right, it was, uh, it was for a lot of reasons, but I'm really glad it ended up working out that way because there's a great music community in Oregon that I oh, started we, we talked with about it. We talked about it on uh, my radio show over the weekend is that people mm -hmm. don't realize what a great, the Northwest is right. such a wonderful place for jazz between Seattle, Portland, and Eugene has some great clubs. It does, yeah, there's a lot of wonderful, wonderful music around the region yeah. and um, jazz included. Tell me, uh, growing up, a lot of music in the home? A lot of music being played, being played. on the stereo. My family really isn't, isn't what you would call a musical one. Yeah. I didn't grow up with brothers and sisters right. or parents who sang bands or yeah. played an instrument. And um, I just always had a passion for it and had a talent for it from right. a really young age. So. Well, what, I mean, but what developed the passion? Was it an epiphany one day? Did you have the obligatory piano lesson? Uh, I did have them, but much later, um, when I was eight, nine, ten, kind of did piano lessons, meaning I did them and I didn't, didn't practice, so <laughs> that didn't do too much, too much good. But um, I, uh, I, since I was a very small child, I, I, I would sing around the house, and my parents uh, noticed that I had a talent for it at a young age. I, I don't remember ever not having a passion for music, to be honest. I think it was. Um, certainly listening to but the variety. But rock and roll? What were you listening to? Um, you believe it or not, yes, rock and roll. Um, my, my dad was a big classic rock fan, but jazz, bluegrass, folk, um, a lot of um, music that I think kids often don't get exposure to as much at a young age, but we live in Alaska, yeah. where <laughs> pop culture, <laughs> right, where, exactly. <laughs> from my parents' record collection, first and foremost. And um, so your dad, I thought about that. So your dad was a Hendrix guy? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, dire Straits. Dire, oh, Dire Straits. Okay. Same Dire Straits band. All right. When I first started in radio, that was that was, that was Nice. Great. Yeah. And so and your mom, and but how did you run into Ellen and the Great American Song? Oh, well, my mom's oh, a big jazz fan. fan. Is she? Big jazz and blues fan. She's been listening to it since as long as I can remember. And, um, I started to become a big fan of jazz. Specifically, I remember, you know, wanting to listen to the, the records and requesting that we listen to CDs as, as early as age eight or nine. Yeah. Yeah. Can we stop listening to dad stuff for a little while? So. Yeah. <laughs> we do begrudgingly. We do. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so fast forward. You, you take the piano lessons. Was that was that just a, a, a bitter swill, a bitter pill to swallow, or was it something you said, this no. this is important to my development? You know, it's funny, I, I kind of rejected piano lessons as something I really wanted to do at a very young age. I wanted to play the piano, but I didn't want to read. My ear my ear was developed enough to where I could pick out a lot of things by ear on the piano, and so frustrating, it was so frustrating to try to parse it down into notes, and I had to start from the bottom up, and I just, yeah. I didn't practice it. Well, you know? so, like, since you don't but, jazz, you play with it. Right, right, exactly. Really? Yeah, I don't <laughs> and it's songwriting, too. Yeah. That, that, yeah. I picked it up, I ended up picking it up and learning a lot more just on my own uh, many years later and um, writing songs and accompanying myself. But it took a while for, for me to, to decide that I didn't need to read proficiently yeah. in order to play an instrument. Okay. So. Hang on, let's do some business. We're speaking with Haley Loren, and uh, she'll be here at Jazz and Flash tonight. Of course, by the time you see this, she wouldn't be here. <laughs> Yesterday, we're expecting and thoroughly looking forward to a wonderful show. First of all, I want a quick thank you to the good folks at the Toll House. Nice room. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful room. Yeah. We're in the three it's degrees lovely. here uh, in the most quiet this bar has ever been. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's where we do jazz tonight. Also, a big thank you to KSCO in Santa Cruz, my home station. Uh, KCAT, uh, who runs this show. And uh, check our website. You can get the Times of Show broadcast. Lost Gadgets Magazine. I'm looking behind me to see you out. Uh, new TV, our friend Steve Campos, and my executive producer, Marguerite Padovani. And a reminder that the gala is coming up on July 23rd. And it's our big fundraiser for the year. Mary Wilson, founding member of the Supremes, will be there. It will be a terrific evening. So uh, empty your pockets and open your heart and come see us. Again, with, with that, that having been said. Um, Very important. It is, it is important. So, okay. What, at what point, are you singing in a rock and roll band in high school? 
I sing in all kinds of different, what they were all, always my band for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> when I sang all Give kinds of Give me the name. All the kinds strangest of music. name no, no. of the group. Oh, no, no. I, uh, it, was always, it was always just under my name, but yeah. while I was growing up, I did a lot of different kinds. But, um, well, it's kind of a look that was no, calling you to sing with Hayden Lorraine and the Zombies. Go mention us. <laughs> um, but I do sing, I do sing in uh, all kinds of different Part time with a, a band in in Oregon called the Sugar Beats. Hang on, I'm kind of rock about this. Yeah, it's like the nice tone. That's a nice tone. Does that come with the phone? You couldn't have chosen. Uh, no, it, it came with the phone. <laughs> That's like the the sci-fi. It does. So I'm no, sorry. I'm you're saying you were in that I'm one of those people now. That's a, that's that's a, the cell phone that goes off in the middle of an interview. You, did you say the Sugar Beats? <laughs> yes. That's a. It's a local. It's like a kind of a jam, um, okay. like a Grateful Dead type band, that okay. has been, and we do a lot of fun festivals around Oregon. When I'm not touring with my own jazz. Musicians. Somehow the words Grateful Dead and fun festivals <laughs> seem to go together pretty well. Um, Very Eugene, Oregon. In, in sure. Eugene, Oregon. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, so professionally, when when did that come together? Professionally, which so when you started singing. When I, well, when I started singing, I started performing at age ten. I can't imagine Sugar Beats. I want a record contract. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, they're, they're very popular in our area, yeah. um, but our, but my, my career started around age 10. I didn't start professionally performing, of course. I started getting my chops, you know, yeah. really doing a lot of practicing and getting terribly, terrible stage fright and yeah. um, got over a lot of that, luckily, by the time I was in my mid-teens. And by the time I was 14, I you know, made well, it a career. Yeah. Yeah. I was you, professional. You're a songwriter, which mm -hmm. uh, and prior, if you're not, if, if you don't do it to music, you're a poet. So right. you started, I assume, writing poetry? Yes, quite a bit, yeah. Um, I would actually- And then you write the music too? Oh yeah, oh, uh, I mean, it, it ranges. Sometimes I co-write, okay. but um, but oftentimes I do, I write solo. Um, and my beginnings actually was writing poetry to songs that were already in existence. Okay. As it was sort of my template for oh, practicing yeah. and figuring out how things flowed. And, um, and it was a really helpful thing. That was in my really early teens, 12, 11. And I started writing at 14, full song. And you know what's great about being a 14-year-old girl is you have this life experience that you can write. Yeah. Really oh, everything is very dramatic. Yeah, everything <laughs> everything is felt oh so deeply. Oh my deep God, blue. he ah. didn't call back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, how are we doing time wise? We've got about 12 more minutes. 12 more minutes, good. Um, so t talk to me a little bit about the, the, the group that you have tonight. I'm jumping around a little bit. Uh, I uh, alluded to the fact that there's an accordion mm -hmm. in it, which yes. the first thing you think about, well, first thing you think about is the old joke about the guy that left his accordion in the back seat, and when he came back, the window was broken, there was another one there. <laughs> but that's terrible. Uh, I <laughs> love accordions. It's very gypsy. It's totally hip. you have it a violin? Is. you have a fiddle? No, but... That um, would be cool. But there is a violin featured on, on the album that's coming out okay. in two months, on September 10th, um, on several songs. Now you're uh, you're still a very young woman, but yet you have a catalog. What are you going to disagree? No, with the no. <laughs> no. I'm considering that today's yeah. my birthday. Oh, you shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> perhaps I'm working on a surprise. Uh, happy birthday! Thank happy you. Birthday. Um, I knew she'd work it Speaking in before. Age. I knew she'd work it. I knew she'd work it in before I brought it up. Um, so, so you, but you have five or six. I do. I have. Now, do you produce them yourself? Yes. Or, or, they are, are all self-produced. I am. I'm actually with two, okay. strangely. One in um, Asia and one in uh, North America and the rest of the world. Okay. And the label. Right? The la oh, of course. Um, the um, our, In Asia, we're under JVC Victor. Okay. And um, in the U.S. And, and Canada and beyond, it's just the Penn Records. You know, we talk, uh, talk about the Northwest being marble spot for jazz, but internationally, mm -hmm. is that you can make very nice living, never be in this country. Right, we're, we're often not. Croatia, Croatia's <laughs> a hot place, and now it's is Central, it? Central Europe. Oh, so wow. It's very hot, but Japan is always this. Yes, place. Japan has been wonderful for us. And yeah. you, you love going to Japan? I do, yeah. I do, I love. Yeah. Uh, we've been there, this will be our, my fifth time there, I or fourth, six, fifth or sixth time. Let me talk to you philosophically about, you do uh, a lot of your own stuff, which I love, and you mix it with, as we talk about, the Great American mm -hmm. Songbook. And I'm a great believer in that, having been programmed jazz radio, is that people people love to hear new things, but they need to also be reassured mm -hmm. within that 
You do mm -hmm. one new song, one old song, one new thing. Oh, okay, you do three mm -hmm. new songs in a row and they just don't get it. Right. Their, their head explodes. It, it's, you can only absorb so much yeah. new information yeah. at one time. But uh, how do you go about choosing stuff that, uh, oh. when you add the, uh, the masters to your work? Well, it's, it's, uh, it has to, m to move me. There, right. there are some songs that just immediately pop out as um, being having an, a really connected story. Or um, also, I'm a sucker for an amazing melody. I love yeah. the melodies of the old songs. But but there's an inherent um, uh, danger in, in the fact that each standard, or many standards, have a quintessential recording of them. Right. Uh, what comes to mind is "I Love You, Corgi" right. uh, by Nina Simone. Right. Which, which, uh, I would never try this no. song. No. No. Neither would but, I. Uh, just, <laughs> but I mean, and, and, and my friend Paula West, who it was wonderful, will take songs like that, like "Lover." and do mm -hmm. an entirely different mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you, you want to bring something new to the table, right. but you don't want to lose what's so special right. about the standard. That's, that's a, a fine line for yeah. sure. We always want to take something and find something new to bring out of it. Sometimes it's a very subtle thing. Um, and sometimes it's a pretty dramatic shift. But like we did a version of, of Blue Skies on our first jazz CD, we had about a song that, um, that takes it from being either a swing or kind of almost a, a ragtime feel of the very original to um, to a, like a hip hop funky groove. Yeah. But it doesn't change the song ultimately all yeah. that much, but the feeling of it is much more modernized. And um, taking things and putting new yeah. rhythm spins on them is one You know, that it's, it's interesting, and uh, two songs come to mind mm -hmm. that have, have had so many variations in jazz as opposed to just popular yeah. music. One is Blue Skies. Mm -hmm. And the other is a surge with a fringe on top, which everyone has done for miles. Not me. Well, I guess it's one of those, all of a sudden, you'll hear a thousand uh -huh. versions. Uh -huh. yep. Now, tonight, you're kind enough to uh, pay a little tribute to uh, our theme master for this year, George and Ira Gershwin. Yes. I should say masters, and you're going to do summertime. Indeed. Clever. What a clever I move. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> you, that. You decided against I Love You for The most popular so Gershwin song. Uh, people, people, find, people want to find out more about you. Can they buy uh, your CDs online? Absolutely. Um, and of course, because this is airing tomorrow, yeah. um, we'll have they them on the show as well. They could have bought them last night. You know, what, they, what they could have done last <laughs> night, I don't know if this was possible, but they could have bought one and then had you sign it. Absolutely. How cool would that have been? That would have been really oh, cool, wow. man. Boy, I wish they'd been here last <laughs> night. Last night would have really been something. It would have been something, been yeah. Been. But if they were to buy a CD online and send yes. it to you, do you have an arrangement that you can sign a copy um, for people? Not typically, you but should I You should be able to click on I something. I respond very well to a nice email. Do you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hang on. Your phone there? Uh, all right, so to talk about, okay, how did the, I, I, I kind of left this accordion thing because I knew I pissed somebody off. Uh, but how did the accordion thing get into the band? Well, because Sergey Telechev, the accordion player, is by far like the most amazing yeah. accordion player okay. I've ever heard in my life. Um, and uh, he really, he really uh, brings some amazing, uh, he has such subtlety yeah. and such skill. And, and it just adds such an ambiance to the songs that it's in. It can be like more of like an organ feel where right. it just fills in the background or it can be a feature like on A Woman's Way yeah. where it, 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 it joins the band and makes it sound eclectic but familiar yeah. at the same time. And well, it harkens of, of, of Django mm -hmm. and uh, Steelman and, and also Stephen Grappelli, that type of sound, even though, yeah, they, even though they right, were accordion right. players, but it was just part and parcel of that uh, whole feel. Mm -hmm. Do a, a dedicated woman's way to be tonight, because that's how I hired I you. I can do that. At least the 14 seconds. I can beginning. do that. The, fr the first 14 seconds are fine. The, that's, that's true, which leaves eight for Afterglow, but we're not going there. <laughs> hey, tell me, tell me, uh, she's easily amused. Tell me, uh, uh, <laughs> can we say that? Uh, <laughs> All right, so the, you, we didn't say the website. No, we did not. So perhaps we should. Perhaps. <laughs> the website is? My website is my name, HaleyLoren.com, and the spelling. You spell Haley, spell I almost said wrong, but differently. I do. I spell it wrong <laughs> and spell differently. It. Yeah, <laughs> differently. It's my great grandmother's spelling, so it's not wrong. Okay. But it's not right. spelled. H A L I E. H A L I E L O R E S. Okay. It's Sorry. not Loren. It's not Lauren. It's Loren. And how did that, is that Frank? <laughs> it's Loren. Is it? What it is it, Margarine? What are you yelling at? Sophia Logan. 
Yes. Like Lorraine. Exactly, Lorraine. exactly. That's how I try to get and certainly how I remember right people. Me, but, I remember. but um but no, it's it's my it's a it's a uh, inspired by my grandmother, thank you. My great grandmother, my grandmother. All right, you are from here because you have a very clever agent who didn't route you. You have to go home and then come back to San Francisco. You're gonna be at Yoshi's. I will be city. what's the date on that? Um, in San Francisco on July 11th. July 11th, so yeah. we folks will be able to see this. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And uh, at that point in time, uh, you know, Nicole Hinder will be here saying you should have been here last night, <laughs> so that's how that worked out. We are delighted. We are Thank so you happy so much. you're here. And uh, Brenda I'm Lake, delighted. steal the show and have a great birthday. Thank Maybe you so a much. I'm going to make you proud. Point. Well, you, indeed you will. <laughs> Haley Lorin, and uh, she will be here tonight. That's Jazz tonight. Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Until uh, Until next week and next time. Be happy. I'm Jacoby. Take care. Thank you. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct, direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Oh, can't you hear a bit of pain and a happy tune? Well, that's your step. Life can be so sweet on the sunny side of the street. I used to walk in the shade with my blues on parade now, but now I'm not afraid. No, this road. Crossed over if I never had the scent. Well, I'd be rich as Rockefeller and gold dust, and my feet on the sunny side of the street. Ooh, ooh, ooh. first jazz songs that I ever wrote, and I wrote it with a friend of mine many years ago. Well, not many, many, but some. <laughs> Ten years ago, when I was um, 18 and living in Nashville, and uh, in a country town writing a jazz song. There you go. But this is, uh, this is what emerged, and it's also the name of our first jazz CD called They Ought to Write a Song. Flowers, candlelight rendezvous, the last. 
lasted for hours But since he's gone He doesn't turn until dawn Nobody ever told you It would feel like this When each tender dream Just seems to fade like do does your arms keep reaching for the love the man who was faithless and me but now he's gone from the sea they ought to write a song about that about the way Sighs of regret You'd be the envy Of the oh, whoa, is me set But romance is through It's just the piper and you Oh, they ought to write Write a song about that song about that somebody somewhere 